Hi, welcome back to Holly Hobbies. Let's make a fun wreath for fall. You will need to grab a pumpkin wire wreath frame from the Dollar Tree for this one. I will show you how to fuse deco mesh with a wood burning tool and add it to the wire frame to create a gorgeous pumpkin wreath to be enjoyed for years to come. This is a lot of fun and the results are incredible. I hope you'll come on over and have some fun crafting this beautiful pumpkin wreath with me today. So let's get started. Hi, welcome back to Holly Hobbies. I am very excited today. I have found the pumpkin form at the Dollar Tree and I've been wanting to do a design with this wreath frame for a long time and we're gonna have some fun making a gorgeous pumpkin wreath for the fall holiday so we're gonna get started we are gonna need a wood burning tool for this one some zip ties and I'm gonna start with two rolls of this soft poly mesh and this is why we're gonna need the wood burning tool because that's gonna help seal the edges and keep this particular type of mesh from fraying. And I just think this is a nice, I like this kind of mesh. I like working with this and I think it's gonna look really nice on our pumpkin. We are gonna use some zip ties as well and we'll need our wire cutters. So let's get started. So when we're using our wood burning tool, we want to make sure that we have a tempered glass and it's, it's a little dirty, but it's fine. I'll just clean it another day. But right now you've got to make sure you have that tempered glass, not regular glass, but tempered glass. And that is what you're going to use as your cutting surface. So we're going to start cutting our mesh into 10 inches and we're going to cut this whole roll of mesh and we're going to need approximately, let's see here. Oops. We have one, two, three, four, five, six of these bars that come this way. So we're going to do about four per bar. So that's 24 and we're probably going to do two to three on these bars. So we'll need about 30, 10 inch pieces. So you might end up, depending on the size of your roll, needing two rolls of the soft poly mesh. So I'm gonna start with my mesh and it doesn't matter if you do it curl side up or curl side down, whatever works for you, but we're gonna be cutting into 10 inch pieces here. And I'm just gonna finish getting my wood burning tool, get it heated up, and we're gonna get all of our pieces cut. We're gonna start with our wood burning tool, our soft poly mesh, and we're gonna cut it into 10 inch pieces on our tempered glass cutting surface. And you're just gonna follow your measurements on your cutting mat that's underneath you can see it and we're going to cut this whole roll into 10 inch pieces and we'll see how many we get out of this roll when we're all done and we're probably going to have to go into that other roll as well sometimes you can get bigger rolls and in which case one roll might be just fine so i'm going to keep cutting this whole roll until we get through and you can get the wood burning tools at any craft store. I always have the links to all my crafting supplies in the description box of all my tutorials. It's about $15. It's not that expensive. You do have to purchase your tempered glass as well. And it's a game changer. I tell you, you could do so much with this wood burning tool and it, it's fun to use. You could fuse different mesh together and create some different effects. And there's just a lot of things you can do with it. It's a really great investment if you're a wreath maker for your crafting supplies. It's, I pretty much don't use my scissors or my rotary cutter that much anymore since I got this. You can cut most meshes. There are a couple that it doesn't work on, but for the most part, it gives it just that nice sealed edge. 
it looks like I got about 21 pieces and we're gonna need at least 30. So we are gonna have to go into this other roll. And I'm gonna cut a few more and be right back. So I have my deco mesh cut. So we're gonna get started and we're gonna need our pumpkin frame, some zip ties and our wire cutters right now. And we're gonna take our 10 inch piece of mesh. We're gonna lay it curl side up and we're gonna keep it consistent. If you wanna do the finished edge at the top and the bottom or left and right, it doesn't matter. It, it's the same, but just keep it consistent. So we're gonna form a triangle. And I always like to get this little finished edge, the first finished edge, just overlapping it just a tad. I just like it so it, you could see that nice finished edge and it's going over that unfinished edge. And you're gonna, you might, if you didn't cut it exactly even, there's gonna be some excess. Don't worry about that. The main thing we're focusing on is I want this edge looking like that. And if I have to pull it over a little bit, then that's what I'm gonna do. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this end and I'm just gonna bend it under. And now I'm gonna pinch and grab all the way to the other side till I come to about an inch and I'm gonna fold that under and I'm gonna just grab it. And what we've made is this daisy petal and see by just putting that edge over that unfinished edge, you can't, you just, all you see is this beautiful finished edge. So this is a classic daisy petal that we use in a lot of the flower designs and we're going to use that to make this beautiful pumpkin wreath. So we're going to take our zip ties and we're going to go ahead and we're going to attach on these 3D bars here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six of them. And we're going to start with our first petal. And you can use any zip tie of your choice. You can use Chanel stems, whatever works for you the best. These I get an assortment packet off of Amazon. And we're gonna go ahead and attach our first petal and we're coming down the stem, the point there, about three quarters to an, an inch. And we're gonna get that on that bar. And we've just attached our first daisy petal to our pumpkin wreath. And we're gonna clip it off with our wire cutters. Now we're gonna attach four on here. So we're gonna get ready to do the next one. So let's go ahead and do another petal together. We're gonna to go curl side up, finished edge at the top and the bottom. And we're forming our triangle and I wanna make sure I get this finished edge over that unfinished edge, even if it leaves a little excess at the side over here. So that's the look I'm going for. And now I'm gonna turn it this way, sideways. I'm gonna flip it the corner under about a half an inch and I'm gonna pinch and grab along that bottom edge till I get to the last inch here and I'm gonna pull that under, bend that under and that gives me a little stem here to grab. And I will, you can form your petal the way you want. And I'm always trying to get that little finished edge over just cause I think it just look how much nicer that looks. So we're gonna go ahead and place our second petal. We're gonna lay it right over that first one. And we're gonna keep layering and stacking till we have four petals on this wire here on each of these 3D wires that stick out. Now I'm a little bit, I need to come down the stem a little bit. You wanna make sure you get at least three quarters to an inch from the top. So you have, it's hanging on a nice piece of that mesh and it doesn't come off. So we've just placed our second petal right on top of that first one. So now we're gonna keep going in that same fashion. Let's do another one together. And we're gonna go, I'm making sure this finished edge right here is coming over that unfinished edge, just like so. I'm gonna turn it on the side. I'm gonna go under about an inch. I'm gonna pleat 
and pinch and grab till I get to the other side and that's gonna come under as well. And we've made another daisy petal here and we're gonna go ahead and just layer that right on top of our other one. And I do get this assortment of zip ties from Amazon. It has all different sizes. They're really cheap. And I just, I love working with all the different sizes. There's longer ones, thicker ones. And I do have all the links to all my favorite crafting supplies in the description box of all my tutorials. And look at that, how pretty that is. We're just layering our petals and I'm gonna go ahead and clip that off. So we're gonna do one more petal to the top here. And look at how fun this is, getting my finished edge over that unfinished edge. See, if I did it exactly even, you're gonna, it's, when you do it, you're gonna get some of that unfinished edge that's gonna come through. And that's why I just recommend going over just a tad of that unfinished edge with your finished edge, because look at how just, it makes a nice, pretty petal, and you see that beautiful finished edge and not that un, unfinished edge poking out. And we're gonna go just like that, and I see it, I have it over the way I want. Now I'm gonna bend it under. I'm going to pinch and grab to the other side and then we're going to bring that under. And we've created another daisy petal. So I'm going to add this fourth one onto our bar here and we are just layering over our other petals here. And we're going to do the same thing on all six of our 3D bars that come up all right so now we have the fourth petal and look at how pretty our pumpkin is starting to turn out and if you look on the back side you'll see that they're just nestled in the pocket of the um, daisy petal. So I'm gonna flip this over. Now on the sides, we're gonna do something a little bit different. See how we can't just leave it like that because you're, they're, you're gonna, there's this big gap right here. So we're gonna add a couple of our petals to this side. We're not gonna add all four of them. We're just gonna add a couple that's gonna fill in this little gap right here. So we're gonna make a, two more petals that we're gonna add to the sides over here to kind of fill in that little gap. So I'm gonna do another one here and we're just continuing with our daisy petal and I'm getting that finished edge overlapping, coming under, pinching and grabbing and under. And we have this beautiful daisy petal so now we have this this bar right here and we're going to we want to keep with this finished edge on the outside and we're going to attach this about halfway up the bar just halfway or so I don't know if you can see what I'm doing but um, I'm just going halfway in the bar here and we can always slide it if we if we don't like that position and I'm gonna attach that to that bar right there. And I'm just gonna angle it. See how I'm just angling it ever so slightly and I'm making sure it's nice and tight and we're gonna do one more and that see how that just helps to fill in that little side gap like that look at just with that one petal already makes such a difference so we're gonna do one more we're not gonna have to do 
any more than two on that one bar right there. So let's do that same thing again. And we're gonna go ahead and place that right there on top of our other one. So we're, we're just kind of, we have it halfway and now we're almost towards the top here, but we're just layering and stacking like we're doing all the other ones. And we'll go ahead and get this one ready to go. And then we go ahead and clip that off. So we left that, see how we have that nice finished edge on the sides here and the finished edges. And now it's up to us, if, up to you, if you wanna kind of tilt it, play around with it, you can always turn it a little bit. And look at how pretty that looks with just those two petals like that. So we're gonna keep in that same pattern and we're going to do four more on this next bar. So I added the four on that next bar and we're going to keep going with four more. All right, so we added that middle row and look at how pretty our pumpkin is starting to turn out. So we've done all the finished edges. You can see those beautiful finished edges on the right. And now we have these three bars left here, the 3D ones that are one on the side. And now we wanna get that finished edge on the left, okay? So when you look at our pumpkin, you're just seeing these beautiful finished edges here. And when I say finished edge, I mean this little edge right here. It's all uniform and that's all you see. So what we're gonna do to get that finished edge on the left side, so right now we've been doing it with our finished edge on the top and the bottom. Now we're gonna move our finished edge to the left and to the right, okay? And we're gonna come over. We're gonna be doing that same thing, but we're just keeping that finished edge on the left and the right. And see, I'm getting doing that same thing, making sure I go over that unfinished edge just a little bit, I'm tucking, and we're pinching and grabbing to the other end. So now you see, now we have that finished edge right here on the left side now, okay? So now we're gonna start by adding these to our wreath frame. And when we get here, we're gonna be tucking those under, so you can't, you won't be able to see this part. So let's go ahead and add that to this bar here. And we could tuck it under in just a minute. And get it on the bar first. And I'm gonna just lift that and that's gonna go under this edge here, all four of these. And we're gonna clip that off. So I'm gonna continue now and you see how we have that nice finished edge is now on our left and I have it under these, we're gonna just place them under these petals. So all as you see is those beautiful finished edges. So I'm gonna continue. Let's do another one together. So we're doing our finished edge on the left and the right. And I'm gonna go this way making sure that this edge is all over that unfinished edge. I'm gonna tuck under. And if your pieces aren't cut exactly, it's fine. This kind of 
thing doesn't have to be perfect and they still, it will look amazing. So I'm just adjusting my petal here. I want to try to get straightened out a little bit more. There we go. And that's a good thing with mesh. It just kind of sticks to itself. So we're going to add, see how we have that beautiful finish edge on that left side now. And we're going to go ahead and place it we're going to lift this petal up and get it right underneath that petal. And we're just going to keep placing our four petals just like we've done before. But we're just making sure that finished edge is on the left side now instead of the right. And I can attach that. There we go. And there we go. So I'm going to keep doing that same thing now. And we're going to go up. We're going to finish the rest of these bars. And this is what we have so far. And we still have this other 3D bar. And then we have the two to put on this last section here. So I'm going to continue and I'll be right back. So I'm getting ready to add that next section. And you want to make sure you just tuck it under. So that finished edge is over that unfinished edge. So I'm going to continue with my next three. I finished off the rest of those bars and this is what we have so far. And you can see that our pumpkin is starting to take form. That 3D effect is popping out at you. But we do have a little gaps here in the middle and we're gonna do something that we're going to um, do so we can fill up these gaps in the middle and give it a little bit more fullness. So you see we have a little bit some gaps and spaces and we want to fill that in a little bit more so what we're going to do is we're going to flip it upside down we're going to take a couple pipe cleaners and we're going to make a little ridge here okay and what that's going to do is that and you can always move your your pedals up or down however you want to adjust everything that is completely up to you so I'm going to make this little ridge that's going to go across here and that's going to allow us to attach some more petals and make this design nice and full. So I'm going to start on this first bar that's coming out, the, the 3D one, and we're going to just twist this right around where the zip tie is, okay? And now we're going to go under and back up and I'm going to do another zip tie or another Chanel stem. I keep calling my Chanel stem zip ties lately. I don't know why I keep doing that. So I got another one here and I'm going to go under and we're just kind of keeping it right around where those zip ties are on the, the stems here on our daisy petal. So I'm just going under and over and I'm, I want it nice and tight. So it's stretched right across there and I'm going to go ahead and tie it to this 3D one. So you see it goes under, over, under, over, and I'm back to this other side and we'll just twist it around there a couple times and twist it around there. And that's given us this little ridge that we're going to add some more petals and then we're going to be able to make this design really full and beautiful so it gives us we're going to attach one two three four five so I'm going to make five more petals and this is definitely where that second roll is going to come in handy so I definitely um, would get two rolls of the orange if you're going to be doing this design so I'm gonna cut some more with my wood burning tool and I'll be right back. All right, so we have our five cut and we're gonna do that same thing, that same concept that we were doing where we were keeping the finished edges to the right and to the left. And that was the way that we had our mesh. So we're gonna, with that finished edge on the right, we want the, when we do our roll, we want the finished edge at the top and the bottom. And we're going to continue with our same daisy petal that we've been doing.
and see I have that nice finished edge on the left or wait let's see here I have this turned around this way there we go <laughs> the finished edge is on the right and all of our, these finished edges on the right so we just want to keep that in mind and we're going to go ahead and attach this right there to that Chanel stem just like that's a wire bar and that just gives us a little something that we can attach it to and give it this extra fullness that we are looking for here. And look at just adding that one right there and overlapping it. Look how pretty that looks. So we're gonna do one more that way with the finished edge at the top and the bottom. And we're gonna come into our triangle. We're bringing this finished edge over that unfinished. We're folding under. We're pinching and grabbing to the other side, folding it under, and we have our beautiful daisy petal with this finished edge right there on your, this is actually on my left. And that one is going, let's see, we just did that there. Now we're gonna put that one on this next Chanel stem section here, right here. Look at how pretty that is. And you can always adjust it. You can bend your Chanel stems if it's not falling the way you want. We kept, we're we keeping that finished edge on the left side and we're gonna do that same thing. Actually, it's, well, I guess it's on the right side. The way I had it turned was on my left, but it's really the right. And I just want you to just keep that in mind just when you're putting these last ones on that you're doing those finished edges. We're keeping in line how we did the whole wreath. So we'll do this next one will be that same way. And then we'll do our other ones with our finished edge on the left and the right. Okay, so let's get this other one on here. And I just think this is turning out so pretty. This is the first one I've done I've never used the pumpkin frames before and I've been just so excited. I was, I had to go to a couple Dollar Trees to find them, but I found them and I have, I just, there's so many things you can do with them that it's, and I just want to show you all the fun things that you can do with these really cool pumpkin frames. And we're going to put this one right there. And then those other ones we're gonna do with that finish edge the other way. All right, there we go. There we go, and then we'll just put this kind of under that. There we go. Pretty, that's so pretty. I am loving it. It's getting exciting. You're starting to see everything take form. And now we're going to do the other ones on that side, but we're going to make sure that we have our finished edge on the left and the right now. And that will give us that finished edge on the other side that we need to keep this all the same. And so now when we put this here, see how we have this finished edge this way? And that's gonna complement the finished edges on that side now. So we just place that one there and we're gonna do this one here and the other one right there. And that just fills in those gaps that we needed filled in to give it that extra fullness that we are after always helps if you have your zip tie in the right way to start with. There we go. Place that there. Give it a good tug. 
and this side I want to just stick underneath that one so now I can still see this beautiful finished edge right there so I have one more that we're going to place in our last little section right here let's do this last one together finish edges on the left and the right and we're bringing that right over there we're tucking this we're pinching and grabbing to the other side And we're going to go ahead and put that pedal. Once you get your pedal the way you want, you could go ahead and stick it on that Chanel stem. And let's go like this, get our zip tie ready. And we're gonna place it right like so. And we're gonna tuck this under that finished edge and see how we have the finished edge. So when we're looking at our pumpkin, all as you're seeing is these beautiful finished edges of our daisy petals. And look at how pretty that just gave us that extra fullness that we needed in this, in this design here, okay? All right, so now we're going to keep moving on. So we added those last ones to the Chanel stem that we made, that bar that went across, and look at how beautiful our pumpkin is starting to come along here. So now we're gonna keep going and we're gonna get our green and we're gonna do some leaves and a stem. So now I'm gonna take my olive green and I'm gonna continue with my wood burning tool. And as you can see, it has a nice little chisel tip and it's a great crafting tool for this mesh. It just cuts it so easy and it just seals those edges and it just gives it a little sealed edge so they don't just unravel. So. I do have all the links in the description box and all my tutorials. You do need a, your tempered glass cutting surface, not regular glass, it has to be tempered. And that those links are in there as well. So I'm gonna take my olive green and I'm gonna continue in those 10 inch pieces and we're gonna cut about eight of these. I hope I have enough with this roll here. This is a leftover from another project. So I'm gonna continue cutting and we're gonna add some leaves and a beautiful stem to this design. And our pumpkin is really starting to take form. So I'm gonna continue cutting and I'll be right back. So I'm gonna take my tube and I'm gonna put the seam in the back and I wanna make sure it's coming up over this wire. You don't have to, if I go down, I might be able to see it. So I'm gonna pull it up just a little bit. And I'm gonna go through the deco mesh now. I'm gonna make it flat and I'm just gonna connect it to this bar. I'm gonna do that on each side. Set it down so I can get my zip tie here. And I'm just going to connect that just so it stays on there. And I'm gonna do another one on the other side. And that's gonna secure that. so it doesn't come off our pumpkin. Okay, and see how it just comes up just high enough to cover that metal bar. So now we have our pumpkin stem and we're going to create our leaves now. So I've attached our first petal and you want it to kind of angle to cover this part, all these zip ties at the top. So I had these too far on the side 
and I want them to kind of angle down a little bit. So I removed them and I'm gonna put them on again. See how much better that covers? That covers all that zip ties and Chanel stems. Now, if you had the orange Chanel stem, that's ideal, but I really don't think we're gonna see it, but I just wanted to give you that option so you know if you had the orange, just use the orange. That matches everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my second leaf and I'm just angling it so it's covering all the tops here of all my zip ties. So there's my second one. See how much better that one looks than the way I had it before? There we go. And now I'm gonna go back and do this one again. And this is our third one and we're going to put this now we're going to angle it like that and we're overlapping our leaves and now I'm going to put this on that bar right next to the stem and I'm going to get my zip tie and we're going to zip tie it just like that at a little slight angle so it's covering all of our stuff that we don't want to be seen. There we go. Look how much better that looks. All right. So now we're going to mimic that same thing on the other side. Now, let me take these again. These are the ones I attached and I took off because I didn't like what was going on. And that happens in crafting. See, I had it too far to the side. You need to kind of angle it that way a little bit more. Okay. So we're gonna mimic everything that we just did. Yeah, get this petal looking a little bit better here. And now we're gonna do that same thing on the other side. And I'm gonna put that one, that one's gonna be right one, right there. If you hear my dog snoring, that's him. If you hear snoring, it's my dog. He likes to hang out with me when I'm crafting. He loves it in my craft room. I have a little tiny craft room and a big dog laying on the ground and it's real fun trying to go around him, but he loves it. He loves being by me when I'm crafting and I love him so much. His name's JJ. He's 11 years old and he is a big hunk of love and he's getting older so he sleeps a lot. So just wanted to let, give you the heads up if you hear some snoring, that's what's going on. All right, so I'm gonna reattach these other ones that I took off and see, I'm making sure I'm angling them now. I wanna cover all the zip ties and everything else that we don't want to see. So this one is going to go there we go and let's get this one so it covers up that and we can always play around once we get these on here but we just want to get these three attached angling them a little bit, making sure they're covering everything. There we go. And we're going to add the other one to this bar, just like we added it to the bar on the other side. Get my zip tie ready on this one. And 
and this one we're going to cover up those right there. There we go. Come on, zip tie. All right, there we go. We're adding that sixth leaf here and look at how pretty. If you get any of these, just very gently clip those off. And there's our third leaf, all right? Okay, so now we're gonna take one more and we're gonna put one in the middle. So we're gonna take our last piece of green and we're gonna make another petal. And we're gonna use this petal's gonna go in the center. And we're still gonna do a bow, so it's really gonna cover a lot of any other spaces and gaps that we have. So we're gonna do our last petal here and I'm gonna take a zip tie and I'm gonna put it on. I'm not gonna do it really tight. I'm gonna leave enough space that I'm gonna be able to slip a zip tie underneath it and be able to um, attach it that way. So I'm just leaving enough, just enough, tight enough to be able to squeeze another zip tie in there, okay? So for this one, we're gonna attach it right here in the middle here, okay? So I'm gonna take my other zip tie and I'm going to bring it in through under that other zip tie there, just like so. And we're going to bring it Actually, let me just place it here first. I'm gonna flip it upside down. I'm still holding on to it. And I can see where I can bring my zip, I see the zip tie. So I'm gonna just slide this in through the zip tie. And now I have this zip tie to use to attach. And I'm gonna attach it right to our Chanel stem that we made, our bar that we went across. I'm gonna go right under that Chanel stem and I'm going to attach the zip tie. And this is gonna attach that last, that last leaf right there. And I'm gonna flip it over and you see we have that last beautiful set of leaves that are falling over the top and I'm telling you oh my goodness is this not looking gorgeous so pretty I am loving this design like I said I've always wanted to do these I've seen the wreath frames at the Dollar Tree all the time and I'm like what the heck do people do with these well you know what we're doing something with them and we are going to do not just one design. We're going to do numerous things with these pumpkin frames because they're so much fun and there's so many things that you can do with them. So we are going to keep moving along and put some extra finishing touches on this design. So we're going to take another Chanel stem before we move on to our bow and we're going to use these two bars on each side of that stem and we are going to make a little hanger that we can hang our design okay so I'm just going to get these through each bar like that and we'll probably go about like just kind of make it about the size that you think like that and then we'll just twist these around And just give it another twist. Make sure it's on there really good. Twist 
twist it and then we're just making just a little makeshift hanger so we can hang our design here. All right, see, we just have a little hanger right there. Okay, so we're gonna flip it over now and you can play around with your pedals. You can move things up and down, just fluff things the way you like. And we're gonna add a beautiful finishing bow to this design. And now we're gonna put our finishing touches and our bow on here. And I have these two picks from Hobby Lobby. We're gonna add these up here. And then I have this ribbon, I have a two inch and what is this one and a half inch and a two and a half inch and we're going to use these i think they're going to complement our design very well and they even complement the picks and look how pretty that's going to look so we're going to take our floral picks and we're going to add them to our design i'm going to go ahead and take off the stickers i just picked these up from hobby lobby and I thought they look really pretty in our design. I had to run down there and get my 40% off before it goes off this week on the fall. So we're gonna finish this up. Now, what I wanna do is I just wanna place a couple picks like this, okay? And I, I'm gonna use this wire in the pick to go through my design and I'm gonna connect it to the wire wreath frame underneath. So I'm just gonna, and then I can bend, this has the wire in so I can bend it and do whatever I want with it. A nice little, it's just a cute, cute little accent here. I love that, look at the beads on there, so pretty. So I'm gonna put one, I'm gonna mimic each of these on each side here. And I'm gonna flip it over. And we're gonna secure these to the frame, okay? And if we need to cut some of it down, we're gonna do that, but I wanna use as much of these, the wire on the picks to actually secure with. That way I don't have to add any wire. So I'm just gonna twist these around each other and let's just, let's see here what we can do. Let's just find one of those wires right here and we'll just twist our pick around that and that should hold it just fine. If you wanna add some hot glue, you can do that as well, but I'm just trying to get these on here and then I'll See, I just wrapped that right around that little wire right there. So let's see if that's gonna be a good placement. And we can kind of bend and spread these out how we like them. And I think that's gonna work just fine. Look at how pretty that's gonna look. There we go. And like I said, if you wanna add a dab of hot glue, you can do that as well. So now we're gonna make our finishing bow that we're gonna put right here in the middle. And then we can Use the wire in these when we're all done and adjust everything, have it coming out the way we want. So I think that is just looks so pretty. So I'm gonna put this off to the side and we're gonna get ready to make our bow. So now we're gonna create a beautiful bow out of these two different ribbons that I picked out. And we're gonna put that finishing touch on our beautiful pumpkin design. So I have this fall burlap ribbon and it is one-sided. You can see the wire on the back. So with this one, we will be doing some twisting. You can use your bow maker if you'd like, or you can do it by hand. And I'm just gonna go ahead and use my bow maker because it's easier for me and I'm just gonna do it that way. So I'm gonna come in 10 inches because I want a 10 inch tail and I'm gonna pinch and grab in the middle and I'm just going to set it in my bow maker. Now, if you weren't using a bow maker, you can just hold it in your hand and you can do the wreath this way. But 
I like to have that to hold it for me so I can measure everything and twist and all that. So now we're going to make a bow. Now, because this is one sided, I want to go ahead and twist that, twist that. So we get the, a nice part on our loop. And we're gonna measure out 10 inches here. We're gonna do 10 inch loops. And I'm gonna come to the 20 mark, I'm gonna pinch and grab. And I'm bringing it over in my 10 inch loop right there. And I'm gonna do that same thing on the other side. I am gonna have to twist it to get that right side. And now I'm gonna measure another 10 inches here. And I'm gonna pinch and grab right there in the center. And I'm gonna make my second loop there. All right, and then I wanna leave a 10 inch tail, just like we started. So I'm gonna cut this one off here at this mark right here. And that's gonna be the first part of our bow. And we have this big, beautiful burlap bow. So now we're gonna make another bow here with our other ribbon. And now we're gonna take our one and a half inch ribbon, and I believe that this is one-sided as well. It almost looks like it's two-sided, but yeah, I guess it could pass for two-sided. It's hard to tell the difference, really. So I guess it is two-sided. So we're gonna start with our 10-inch loop here, our 10-inch tail, just like we did with the other ones, and I'm gonna put that in my bow maker, just like that. So now we're gonna do eight-inch loops, and I just, no, it is too, this side looks a little darker, so we do wanna keep twisting. So we're gonna, on these, we're gonna do eight-inch loops now. So I'm gonna go to my, eight inch mark and I'm gonna just pinch and grab and I'm going to make my first loop and I'm going to the other side now and I'm going to do that same thing I'm using my mat here as my guide and I'm going to pinch and I'm going to make my next loop there All right, so we're gonna do another set of loops. So I'm gonna do another eight inches. And the bow makers just for me make it a little easier because it's hard for me to manage and hold it all in my hands, but it is doable. A lot of people do bows all the time without a bow maker. This is just another thing that I always say we don't need. It just sometimes makes life a little bit easier. So I'm gonna pinch at that eight inch mark and I'm making my fourth loop now. All right. And I'm just placing that in and just getting my loops all nice there. Okay and I wanna leave it with a 10 inch tail. And I'm just gonna, I'll just twist that cause it looked like it was laying a little bit better that way. So now I'm gonna come and cut off my 10 inch tail here. All right. So this is gonna be our bow and we're gonna do one last little finishing touch so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my ribbon bundle off of my bow dabber and I'm going to attach it with a zip tie right there in the middle of this whole bundle here. Okay, and I'm just gonna lay that down. And before I tie it super tight. I want it, this is a floral wire. I'm gonna stick that in the zip tie there. I'm gonna get it about halfway. 
and I'm going to zip tie this really tight right there in the zip tie. And I have the, the notch of the zip tie on the back so you can't see it in the front. And then we're gonna use this little floral wire here to attach it to our reframe. All right, so now we've made this cute little bow here and we can always fluff, fluff up all of our little loops here. And we can do that when we're getting ready when we have it on our design. All right. So now the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna make a little, just like a little tiny loop. So we're just gonna cut a little piece and we're just gonna do this little roll, almost like a little, like a little loop here. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger, actually. Let's do a little bit bigger so I have some more to work with. And I'm going to hot glue this end together. And I'm gonna get my silicone fingertips. And I'm just letting my hot glue gun heat up. In the meantime, while we're waiting on that, we're going to get a Chanel stem. We're gonna take a Chanel stem now and we are going to put that right there over the middle. And we're going to come in the back and we're gonna twist it, okay? All right, so now we're gonna take our little piece here, we're gonna make a little tube and we're just gonna hot glue gun that and that's gonna give our bow this little extra right here. And it's kind of like a little, a little cheat. And I'm just gonna put a dab of hot glue. Didn't quite heat up. That's why it got strings, but that's all right. It's gonna be enough to, to get it together there. Once again, you'll find all the links to all my favorite crafting supplies in the description box and all my tutorials. So now we have this cute little, this cute little, um, I don't even know what you call it, like a, a loop, a hoop or whatever. So we're gonna put this right here on our design and now we're gonna use those Chanel stems that we just put on. We're gonna go through the middle and we're just gonna secure it to our bow. So we're gonna take that one that way and the other one the other way. And we are just securing that to that center portion of our bow. And I'm gonna bring it around the back. I'm gonna twist these and we can go ahead and clip that off bend that down and now we're gonna when we flip it over we have this cute little bow look how cute that is got that little part and we got our loops and we can finish all these off now and let's just go ahead and dovetail the ends here on all of our ribbon And we'll do the same thing with our burlap ribbon. And we're just finishing off our beautiful bow that we just made together. And look at how pretty that bow is. If that does not scream fall, then I really don't know what does here. And there we go. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to attach this ribbon that we just made, this bow, and we're going to attach it with our floral wire here. And we are going to put our final 
finishing touch on our beautiful pumpkin here. And we're just gonna lay that right in the middle and look at how pretty that's gonna look with our cute little spray of floral picks. And I just think those colors just complement everything so well. So we're just going to take our wire and we're gonna go on each side. We wanna get it in the middle here. We'll go on each side of that stem right there. And this is gonna cover up everything here. If anything else is showing right there, this is gonna take care of that. All right, so I'm gonna flip it over. And I wanna make sure I am We're just gonna twist the floral wire together. And I'm gonna just, for extra security, I'm gonna bring it around this wire. We'll bring it around this wire. And we'll just twist it on itself. I'll twist it around that spray wire too. And that way, it'll just give it a little extra reinforcement there. All right. Now we're going to flip this over and you can play around with your ribbon. Uh, you can fluff up your bows. You can bend your spray the way that you want it, but look at our gorgeous And look at how pretty our pumpkin turned out. I absolutely am in love with this design. And I think it turned out so pretty. Look at that beautiful top there with our spray coming out the sides. And I think it is gorgeous. And I'm so happy that we crafted together today. And this just makes me happy. And you can play around with your petals and what, however you want. You can move things around and get it to that desired look that you're after. But I mean, if that doesn't scream fall, I don't know what does. I am in love. I am so happy that I finally crafted on a Dollar Tree pumpkin form and look what we created together. I'm so happy that you came to my channel and crafted this really fun fall pumpkin with me today and that you'll remember to subscribe, like, and follow me for more wreath and crafting ideas. Thanks for watching Holly Hobbies from my heart to yours. Remember to subscribe, like, and follow for more wreath and crafting ideas. Thanks for watching, Holly Hobbies.